As we look at Psalm 104 in verses 19 through 23, we see that God is the author of order and the designer of all creation. Psalm 104 and 19 reads, He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knows it's going down. The moon as well as the sun is appointed to divide time and seasons, even the division of the year into months. Perhaps in the psalmist's mind, he is reflecting on what has been said in Genesis 1, 14 through 19. It reads, Then God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from night. They will serve as signs for festivals and for days and years. They will be lights in the expanse of the sky to provide light on the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to have dominion over the day and the lesser light to have dominion over the night, as well as the stars. God placed them in the expanse of the sky to provide light on the earth, to dominate the day and the night and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. Evening came and then morning, the fourth day. Verses 20, 20 through 23 in Psalm 104 read this way. You make darkness and it is night, in which all the beasts of the forest creep about. The young lions roar after their prey and seek their food from God. When the sun rises, they gather together and lie down in their dens. Man goes out to work and to his labor until evening. God does not really have to make the darkness, since darkness only exists in the absence of light. The Hebrew word, translated as he makes, is pronounced sheath, and it means to bring about or appoint. So perhaps comprehensive wording would be that God permits or appoints the darkness by withdrawing the light. Man is a duronial part of the creation. Like most other herbivores, our work period is during the day when it is light out, and our rest comes at night. This is contrasted with a large group of predators, which are nocturnal creatures of the night, and who rest during the daylight. It would not be prudent for man and the wild beast, to, uh, beast of the forest to collect their food at the same time. God has given the night to them as a proper time to procure their prey, and the day to rest as humanity labors. The psalmist writes, The young lions roar after their prey and seek their meat from God. This is a prophetic rendering of the roar. To whom do the lions roar? Perhaps the psalmist has in mind Psalm 150 and verse 6. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The lions certainly are not roaring to their prey. That such a frightful sound would have a tendency to alarm the victims and drive them away. How soul comforting is the thought that the spirit is able to translate the voice of a lion into a meaningful rendition of thanksgiving to his creator, just as he can do with the blood-washed prayers of all of God's saints.